Hey everyone, we're going to get into the next stage of the XY grid video. Uh, this is very, very powerful. It takes about an intermediate skill set to get working, uh, but we're going to step by step uh, get you through it. And if you have any questions, you can jump on the Discord server and we can talk it through uh, pretty easily here. Uh, one thing, again, as a pre reminder, you have to have a a uh, couple of custom modules, uh, custom nodes available already installed to get this to work. Uh, one, I typically like the efficient loader. So the impact custom node is gonna be very important. I like a lot using the mile high styler. So you can go on the Civ site and search for mile high and installing that. Uh, that one's optional, you don't need it, but it's very, very valuable. Again, you have the ability to create a whole ton of different styles very quickly against your prompts. Uh, it'll save you a lot of time. Uh, and then the, finally, the last one is going to be uh, uh, also, let's see, the efficiency custom node as well as the impact custom node. If you have that, that that'll uh, uh, be really a prerequisite again to get this to work right. Okay, so we're going to get started here. And you can see I have it really easily hooked up here, model to model, the conditioning, latent VAE. Uh, I've selected a model, an SDXL model. Uh, and I've started a clip skip of two, some models better at clip skip one, three, four, you can play with it. Um, and then finally, I'm gonna have my initial latent size at 1024 by 1024, uh, batch one. And on the sampler side, you can see, you know, you can have this really however you want, uh, but you know, typically I like to have it for preview sake, uh, typically about 25 steps uh, and an 8.0 uh, Euler with normal, but some people also will do Karas um, uh, as well. So you can obviously, you know, line that up however you want. Uh, one interesting piece here that I know typically you'll have a, a regular save here, um, you know, because this is a, a special kind of uh, node custom developed node uh, system, it's actually gonna be relying on a special sort of save node. So it's called the uh, CR image output, CR's comfy role uh, image output. And so you're going to want to do that. So you're going to want to hook that up uh, like that. Uh, and also make sure you're choosing save. And we'll get to the prefix and, and the trigger type stuff soon. Uh, but I wanted to at least start us off there because uh, that doesn't uh, kind of line up with the other names of the other nodes. Um, okay, so the other uh, key item you're going to want to start with is a primitive node. And this primitive node, I'd almost call like your looper, right? It's going to be the thing that controls the creation of each of the individual images that's going to end up in your grid. And additionally, uh, it will let you uh, kind of keep track of kind of the number of times that it ran through the iterations. And to get this all set up here, you're going to look for uh, CRX, CR space X. And that's going to bring a, a few different new nodes here available. We're not actually going to be going through all of them uh, in this video, uh, but we're going to do the ones for this basic example of setting up a grid. So the first one is list. We're going to want from folder and also save grid. So we're going to pop these over here. List from folder and also save grid. And uh, one thing you're also going to want to do right away initially is you see there's a lot of uh, a lot of these nodes have triggers on them. See at the bottom trigger. So this this sort of system relies on itself to kind of trigger and direct the kind of course of action of creation of grids. So we're going to actually turn each of these trigger nodes into inputs. So they're going to like kind of all connect to each other. So I'm going to do that there. This one and this one as well and what you'll see is the CR list one doesn't have one because this is going to be the kind of controller. This is going to start us off here. So we're going to go and trigger uh, this one. And we're going to, you know, trigger this one. And we're going to trigger this one like that. Great. Uh, and then finally, one other piece that we're going to do is you see how the index here is manual. Well, we want our looper to control this this whole process. So we're going to right click and we're going to make this index as an input and then we're going to connect. And the moment you connect, you'll see it's going to turn itself into sort of a, a looper. 
And two items you're going to want to fix here right away. First of all, number one, it will say fixed, right? It's kind of static number. We want it to actually increment, right? We're going to be looping. So we want it to go one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and secondly, you want us to start us on loop one, so not zero. So you're going to want to start that default on number one. Uh, once you have that started, I think we're in a really good initial spot here. Now, a little bit about folders. We're going to want to create a folder for our grid images, right, where that final output of that grid is going to go. So we have a Teasley view. And we also want to be able to have a folder specifically for all the images that are going to go into the grid. So we're going to want to have a folder for that. So we're going to go so in your kind of comfy main folder, we're going to have an output folder, right? Uh, we're going to delete this and we're going to start from scratch. So one folder is going to be your grid folder and the other folder is going to be, and you can call it whatever you want. Uh, in this case, our uh, variances that we're going to do, our grid is going to be around ice cream. So I'm going to create an ice cream folder, right? And your workflow right now does not know that those folders existed because I just created them. So you're going to want to refresh your page. You don't have to actually restart Comfy's console. You just have to refresh the page. So when we refresh the page, zoom back up, now it knows that those folders do exist. And you can see, number one, uh, on the save grid, right? This is where we're saving our grid. Our output folder is grid. So it's already selected there. Um, uh, sometimes, by the way, the file name prefix for your grid will have a default value. You can keep it there. It's also optional. You can have it blank. Uh, all it does is this is going to attach itself to the name of your grid image, the image that has all the images as part of the grid to it. Uh, otherwise, it's going to save it properly. The other piece to this is where are we storing all of our ice cream images? So that's in the from folder. The from folder node is basically going to read all of the images that are generated and then put them in the resulting save grid uh, image. So in this case, it may default as grid. That's obviously wrong because that's not where we're storing our ice cream images. We're storing them in the ice cream folder, right? That second folder. So that's really important as well. Um, one other piece just to confirm, like we said, under the CR image output, right, our saving, uh, we want to also make sure that our grid is saved as well. So then we know uh, predictably where our uh, source images and where our grid uh, images are going to be stored. Okay, great. Um, okay, so like I said before, this is a very, very powerful system. And so whatever we want to vary in our grid, we have the ability to uh, to connect up to. Now, just to show you very, very briefly, right, a grid for those that aren't, uh, haven't seen this sort of format before, it's on two axes, right? Two axes. One is X, right, across, and one is Y. And in this case, I just did a very, very, and sorry, it's not Photoshop or anything special, but a very rudimentary grid just to show you what this may, what you may want to verify, uh, uh, vary by. So in this case, I may want to vary by CFG on my images, and I might want to vary by seed. So in this case, if I'm connecting up my seed, I can say, well, for this seed, I want to look at what the image is going to look like at 6.0, 8.0, and 10.0. And for the seed, same, and this for seed, same. At the same time, I may want to see, well, what is the effect of 6.0 against these different seeds? And you can look vertically. You can see the change. And that's what the, where the power of this is. But when you're creating a grid and you're going to vary it, what's important is to know how many images you're going to need to create. So in this case, since we're doing a three by three, we have nine images total. And that's going to be important because we need to know that we're going to be looping uh, nine times. OK, so now that we have that established, uh, we're going to do a few different things. So by default, you're going to see this X, Y list. And this is kind of your controller to say, what do you want to vary by? Right? It doesn't know. You, you could vary by numbers. You could vary by seeds. You could vary by CFG. You could vary by uh, step numbers. You could vary by the prompt. You could vary by the model. Any element in this platform, you can verify uh, vary by um, for your grid. So let's run through our example just like we did before. We said by CFG, and we also said by seeds. So on our X 
axis, so going back to our image, right, her x-axis, we're going to vary our CFG by uh, 6.0, 8.0, and 10.0 for our CFG. So we're going to replace this 6.0, comma, 8.0, comma, 10.0. And you can put whatever values you want. If you want to do 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you can do as many as you want. The only key thing to remember is the total number of values you're going to test is the total number of uh, iterations or loops you're going to want to do and the total number of images you're going to need. So in this case, we did three. Now on the Y side, right, let's go back to our sample. We're doing it by seed. So we have three seeds. And for this example, we're just going to just do a few random numbers. And there. So you can see three. So it's a three by three grid. So three times three is nine. So coming over here now, we have a couple of places where we need to put nine. First of all, you're starting your looping at one, right, to match your primitive. And secondly, you're going to end on nine, right? You're looping at a total of nine. And the number of columns, right, how many columns we got here? One, two, three. So we're going to have three columns under your max columns area. OK, great. Uh, down here at the bottom, you have font size, you have gap, right? If you want a little space in between so it looks nice, you can totally optionally do that as well. Uh, OK, awesome. So that's great. Now, here's the thing. We know what we want to verify, vary by, but we haven't connected it up to anything, right? Nothing is, is happening over here. So a uh, couple of things of note. So anything that you put here, you're going to want to be able to convert to the right type. This is just text, right? It doesn't know that this is actually a number yet. And so we're going to have to kind of uh, put these into number formats, right? You can see the top one is a float, right? It's a decimal. And the bottom one is just an integer. And so we can, we have to convert this from text to a float and text to an integer. So the first one we're going to do here is text to uh, number, because we know it first has to convert into a general number uh, sort of format. And then that number is going to turn into a number to uh, float, right? And that's great. And so now where is that float going, right? This is the CFG. So over here on our sampler, we have CFG. Right now it's hard coded as a number, but we're going to now connect it up, right? It's going to become an input. And we're going to connect our float to our CFG. And we're going to now do the same thing for our seed. Now the seed is a number. So we're going to do text to number. And we're going to then turn this to number to int. And just like the last time, right? So the seed is over here, right? Right now it's just doing a random seed, negative one, but we're actually going to want to force what seed we want to use. So we've connected that up down here. You can see blue to blue, seed to seed. All right, so we're all connected up. That's awesome. Next, the final step of this whole process is we want to have our prompt, right? So in this case, we want to do an ice cream cone uh, carnival at nighttime with bright lights. OK, awesome. And you know, again, you have the power to do as much prompting as you want, uh, or you can do any styling you want, but we're going to keep it super simple for this one. And we are, uh, but before we run it, we have a couple more final options and we're good to go. Uh, number one, in terms of our uh, saving, right? Our saving. We already said we're going to save it, which is awesome. But the final piece of this is that our, our prefix, here, let me zoom over here. Our prefix has to say, where are we going to save our images? So as we know, and you could saw, see that was a default value we said we were going to save it in our ice cream folder, right? So we're going to say ice cream, because it's going to start in the output. And then we have to give it a prefix, right? So it knows what to search for to create this grid. So we're just going to say, call it ice. So every single one of the images that are going to be generated in the ice cream folder is going to start ice. And there'll be like underscore 0001, 002, 0003 to be able to create your grid uh, for you automatically. Um, okay, great. And then finally, the last piece of this whole big puzzle 
is the actual looping. So we have our looper started at one, which is great. We know we're going for nine images. And over here on our batch count, we want to say we're looping nine times. So one final item uh, that I forgot to mention is the where are the images coming from uh, to be able to store. So we need the images from our uh, from folder over to our uh, grid. So we need to connect that up as well. And once we do that, we're going to hit Q. You see, it loads it all up for you. So it has all the iterations all set up and it's going to start to loop through automatically. Okay, we're back. And you can see our grid generated successfully. I just increase this so you can all see. You can see it varied it by CFG along the top and by seed down the side. And just as a verification again, right, it saved it in our folder. So we can see all of our ice cream images, if you wanted them separately, are there uh, to be able to check out. But you can see this is a very easy and quick way to preview exactly what is going on with potential ways. And in fact, for our little experiment here, you can see as you increase your CFG, 6, 8, 10, look at how much extra detail is trying to be provided as it kind of bakes a little further in the rendering engine. And, um, or, uh, and then finally down the side here, right, you can see the heaviest of the detail, see how it varies by seed. So each of these are, are slightly different because it's a different seed. So that's it. Um, glad you had an opportunity to kind of spend some time here. I hope this made a lot of sense and otherwise we'll talk to you soon.